What we're talking about today is dermal infections and if you have a dermal piercing then you know they're prone to infections. Um, I have a dermal in my chest and I think one of the things that you have to think about is the area that your dermal is in when you wonder why you're getting a lot of infections. Um, if it catches, it flares up red. If you have it probably on your wrist, it probably would catch. On your hips, probably would catch. I don't know, I haven't got those, but what I can comment on is that when I sleep and I lie on the side with the piercing um, in my chest, means that, well, quite frankly, my cleavage means that that's a hot area and it has potential to sweat. Now, sweat carries bacteria and sweat can get into that um, wound or that open, you know, part underneath the, the dermal um, and cause bacteria. So it's not nice, but it's true. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today is what I do when I get a dermal infection. And first of all, I think the first thing I tried when I got an infection was using these, your normal, you know, earbud kind of, um, you know, cotton bud style stuff. These are really bad at trying to get stuff underneath the actual top of your microdermal. So I discovered these one day cleaning and I was like, um, I discovered them because I already used them as a lash tech, but I discovered them as a good tool to get underneath the jewel of your dermal. And what they are is they're called microfiber brushes and they look like little, I don't know if you can see, let's try little brushes some of them are made really well and some of them are made really bad so the bad ones this fluff comes off the end very easily it's okay if you're just cleaning under a dermal but for a lash tech that's really annoying so you can get better ones i don't think that pink one will be any problem for you and see that one there that one is actually quite a good one to use as well so there's a couple of brands this this if i i'm pretty sure these were just sourced from china maybe Aliexpress or Alibaba um, and this is a micro brush and this is um, one of Blink's Lash Stylist ranges. That one there is from Lash Base. Okay talking about the antiseptics that I've used, um, this is one of the first and one of the best that I used. It is an American brand and brand and it's called Neosporin um, and it's got B sulfates and it's also got zinc and it's an antibiotic ointment cream. It's got some other stuff in it as well but um, this is it here so hopefully you can see that and you'll think you'll find that in America unless it, it doesn't exist here anymore but it is actually quite good. Active ingredients are cocoa butter, cottonseed oil, olive oil, sodium um, pyro Pyruvate, vitamin E and white petroleum so um, I found that this actually worked really well um, and it's just a clear ointment so just also like that and then I get my micro brush get some off and then I pop it underneath and around so I try and get it in as far as I can so the ointments are good another form of ointment is the betadine it's very yellow, so your skin is going to look yellow whilst it's on. So you can probably see that there. That there. See so when it goes on, it turns your skin, it's iodine. Turns your skin, skin, ugh, turns your skin quite yellow. The other form, which is really good, of the betadine is just the liquid form. So that's actually um, easy to, to drop out with a clean microfiber brush. You can just get like a little bit off the top and then you're away laughing. If I show you on the cotton bud, maybe you'll see how, how little you would need on a microfiber brush. Cause you know, I mean, it just goes, oh God, this is freaky trying to draw it up in the middle of the ear. There it goes. So you can see how far it goes. I mean, I wouldn't need to use much at all. And I think that the liquid goes underneath a lot better and kind of swabs around um, the, the infected area. 
Um, so this is for minor cuts and abrasions and the treatment for minor skin infections. Um, and it says don't apply it to um, large skin areas and do not use if you're hypersensitive to iodine. Um, okay, so basically it's the same with everything. If irritation and swelling and redness um, carries on, you should stop using this stuff and see a doctor. There was one other thing that I was, it was suggested to me by a pharmacist and that's using peroxide as a first stage antiseptic cream. So, um, not peroxide as in peroxide, but something that has peroxide in it. So you've got um, Cristicide, this one here, and that's actually based on using 1% hydrogen peroxide. It's liquid stabilized and it is regarded as a first aid cream, so it's actually quite good. This one here, you know, this is what you kind of expect when you get something like this out. We'll use a new side. It looks, if I just put this over here, I don't know if you can concentrate. I might get some better shots. It looks crystally. I mean, it looks like a sheen. It almost looks like a satin, you know, creamy kind of eyeshadow type that you might use. Um, but this one is to help with minor skin infections such as acne, cuts, scrapes, um, burns and school sores and my business partner said she used it once on an ingrown toenail and it was really good. So that is another one. You can use your microfiber brush, pop it on and go right underneath. Um, and then I use that until the redness goes down. If there's swelling, there's probably, um, you know, quite frankly, there's probably pus under there. Um, so, and it really hurts when you have an infection of your dermal. So I use that as much as I can, morning and night. I use the iodine based ones um, at night because my skin looks yellow. Um, if I was going out or working as a beautician, then I would um, just pop the actual ointment on and then I pop a plaster over top just so that it's hidden because it looks a bit nasty um, and so yeah do that at night and then if it's during the day and I just want to keep it nice and clean but you know not looking like I've got something all over it I'd use the Neosporin, um, Neo, Neosporin sorry, white clear one and just pop a little bit underneath you don't need to chuck on heaps you probably feel like it when it's really sore, um, but this one you can see on as well. So, um, if I got to do any work with machines, which I don't do much anymore, I used to as a student, then I would swab around the piercing. So I would put heaps of Vaseline under the piercing, on the piercing, all around it. Then I would use cotton pads and I would swab around it, and then I'd get a, um, a plaster to put over top. So it effectively creates insulation because currents running through metal and everything can be not so nice. So we've got three gels, one liquid. You've got your iodine antiseptic. You've got your kind of iodine based um, liquid. So that's great. You've got your hydrogen peroxide based one. And then you've also got your neosporin antibiotic type of gel. Um, so you've got heaps of heaps and heaps of options, which means that um, you um, can choose which one you think works best for you. If you get one and you don't see any results within a few days, then I, you know, will normally try a different one. Um, hopefully each of those are good enough for you um, to try and get a result. There they all go. Hopefully that's easily focusing on them for you. All right, and lastly, microfiber brushes. Those are brilliant to have. Get your hands on these. You know, reactively, um, you know, when you have an infection, you want to do something about it, but proactively, you could be putting, you know, using these, putting a little bit of iodine or your antiseptic gel underneath your, um, your jewel at night you know when you see it just get a little bit pink just to keep things under control so use those they're brilliant um, so lastly I think all I need to tell you is that I'm a beautician and that, that what I've shown you today is based on my own experience and I'm not a doctor so I can't give you any medical advice if you have an infection follow um, the instructions 
you know, all the cautions that say if redness, irritation, swelling or pain persists, discontinue use and consult a doctor. So, you know, I mean, you do need to be consulting an expert in that field if the over-the-counter drugstore or pharmacy things don't work. Um, try eBay, try Trade Me, see if you can find these microfiber um, brushes. I don't know if Lash Base will let you buy them if you're not a beautician, but I mean they are a really good store for beauticians to get all your lash supplies from. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, that's everything for today. I'll see you next time when I make another video. Check out the two other Do More Piercing videos that I have. One over here, that one is about the micro um, Do More Thin tongs that you can use. It's a tool that gets underneath, holds the post so you can twist off the top. The other one is over there, which is about um, magnetic bases. Using a magnetic base, putting it in once, then having jewels that are magnetic so you just have to take the jewel off each time. Um, I think the key thing there is that when you have a dermal infection it's sore and it hurts and you don't really want to be twisting off the top of it or moving around that area much so um, you know if you get the microfiber brushes and you can get under there without you know causing much pain until it does calm down you can get the top off and have a look. Thanks for watching see you next time. Bye!